that none will be hurt nor anyone harmed, and all participators and spectators alike will give you honor and glory. Finally, Lord, continue to bless all those who this night defend our rights and protect our land. We ask this prayer in the matchless name of him who gives us life, and may we all together say, Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome Palm Coast, Florida native, Tiffany Thomas. Present. Oh, oh see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam? Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bomb bursting still there oh saint does that star spangled banner yet wait oh the land of the free and the Saw the faces tremendous focus anticipation for the start of something big and fast so Miss Sprint Cup ready for her close-up standing by down there with Matt Yoka. Matt? Chris, I am joined by Miss Sprint Cup Julianne and tonight is always exciting for the fans but it's especially huge for Sprint as well. Absolutely. I'm having a blast here in Daytona. It's my first time but we love our NASCAR fans and we love bringing them the best deals in wireless. So right now if you bring in your AT&T or Verizon bill, turn in your old phone, we will cut your rate plan in half. It's an unbelievable event going on right now. All you got to do is go to Sprint.com and it's as simple as that. Thank you. Spectacular package. Thank you, Juliana. Chris? And we will sprint forward the NASCAR season on Fox, the unlimited, unlimited. From Daytona International Speedway, 25 drivers that you'll see in the Daytona 500 a week from tomorrow on display tonight if you stay with us.
NASCAR on Fox Live on the Sprint Unlimited. That's the defending champ of NASCAR. Kevin Harvick is the only repeat winner of this race in the last eight years, buckling up, getting ready to go, and we're just about ready to go. Trackside, Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, I'm glad to have you watching with us. You talk about a strategy of wanting to run up front with 75 laps. Paul Menard, Casey Kane on the front row. What about some of the big name drivers in the back? How quickly do they have to make their move? Well, look at Jamie McMurray, one last year's all-star race. You've got Tony Stewart and Dale Jr. both back in the pack. I can't wait till they throw the green flag and see what these guys do. How many moves they're able to make. Daytona is a narrow racetrack, relatively speaking. They're going to be two and three wide. It's going to be hard to make any passes. That's when strategy and the crew chief is going to have to get you some spots. But early on, watch for Dale Jr. and Tony Stewart to charge. And right behind the starting front row, Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski in their Penske fours. But let's go back down trackside. First command of 2015. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your grand marshal for the Sprint Unlimited. Longtime Daytona International Speedway ticket holder from Altamont Springs, Florida, Robert Burton. Thank you, Sprint. Let's get it started. Drivers, start your engines! And let's welcome in the voices of NASCAR on Fox. The last 14 years getting ready to crank it up for their 15th. Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. Mike, good to see you guys again. Oh, and great to be here in Daytona once again, Chris. Happy Valentine's Day to our wives and, and to everyone watching. Now, Michael Waltrip just talked about the urgency to get to the front, but Darrell, who won this race in 1981, is there a strategy in this first segment to laying back in the weeds well maybe maybe not but you kind of look at these cars and when they're all together there's a big bubble of air and when you're at the back that bubble of air you can run through it because there's a void in there getting to the front's the hard part getting out front's the hard part but these guys all tell me they'd rather be in the front watching you in the rearview mirror than they had for you to be in front of them and you're watching them at your windshield so i think i want to get to the front asap Having a caution flag at 25 laps is no accident, Larry, because it looks like that may put you just outside the window of being able to run the whole rest of the race under green. Yeah, Mike, it's rare in this short of a race you have the known fact that you will get a caution at lap 25. And what's significant about that number, at best we're going to go back racing with about 46 or 47 laps to go, just outside of that Snoko fuel window. So I think when that caution comes out, there'll be a lot of options. Guys that come get their tires and fuels and just try to make it to the end possibly or bank it on a caution. I think the way to go is when we get one to go on that caution, you come to pit road and you top it off of fuel and you go from there. Mike. The possibilities are unlimited. <laughs> nine times this race has been won with a last lap pass. In seven of those nine races, that was the only lap the winner led.
The action could be unlimited tonight. Last year, 18 started. Fewer than half of them finished in the Sprint Unlimited. It is a crisp, very cool night in Daytona Beach. It's been clear, not a cloud in the sky all day. 52 degrees at race time. Let's have a look at tonight's Sprint starting grid. Set by blind draw, Paul Menard won the pole, chose the outside lane, Casey Kane. The 2010 runner-up, Joey Logano, third and fourth in his two starts for Penske in this race. There's his teammate, last year's runner-up, Brad Keselowski. Kyle Busch, the 2012 winner, and Austin Dillon making his debut in this race. Greg Biffle, runner-up in 2013. Kevin Harvick won three of the last six. Denny Hamlin, two-time winner, including last year with Martin Truex Jr., who was ninth in 2013. Jeff Gordon won his first unlimited start. He says this will be his final one. And Ryan Newman, the runner-up in 2005. Kurt Busch, a winner here in 2011. Carl Edwards with his crew chief, Darian Grubb, who won it last year. Danica Patrick, 18th Daytona start for Danica, and Matt Kenseth won a dual race last year, leading up to the 500. Jimmy Johnson, the 2005 winner with Clint Boyer, finished eighth in 2012. Eric Almirola won the July Sprint Cup race here. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., second time he's been in the Unlimited. Jamie McMurray, twice a runner-up, and Tony Stewart, a three-time winner in row 11. Casey Mears is back in the Unlimited, first time since 09. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won it twice. And Kyle Larson joins Austin Dillon tonight in making his Unlimited debut. Mike, what do you say we talk to the champ? What do you say we talk to Kevin Harvey? Hey, Kevin Harvey, could Steve W. got a copy there, my friend? Yes, sir, I do. Harv, look, you're coming in here. You're the defending Sprint Cup champion. You won the last two races of 2014. You've won this thing three of the last six times. What can we expect out of you tonight, buddy? I think for, for everyone on our Jimmy John's team, uh, our goal is to win the race. And I think as you approach this race, this is a, a great race to just be aggressive and uh, really just go for it, just for the fact that there's nothing on the line other than a trophy. So uh, we're excited about it, really happy to be back in the car. And, Glad to uh, to finally get a green flag. Did they? Uh, did did Rodney share uh, any uh, strategy for tonight? Do you, can you share that with us, or is that top secret? No, usually he doesn't even tell me. So I just uh, focus on driving the car, and then I'll I'll listen as I go along. So it's uh, it, that makes it more interesting. So I'm sure we'll uh, have the right strategy and uh, definitely race hard. All right, buddy. Congratulations on the championship last year. Good luck tonight, and have fun out there, champ. Thanks, man. 75 laps is the distance. NASCAR will throw a caution on the field, as we've mentioned, at lap 25. The fuel window, 38 to 44 laps, and we expect when they go back to green after that caution, it'll be 46 or so laps to go. The rules for these cars, the same as last year. What is new is NASCAR's new pit road officiating system. Other sports use replay officials to look at video evidence. NASCAR does it in real time. There is a look inside the pro trailer, and they will be monitoring pit road infractions, which an official will review and then make the call using that video evidence. Let's get late breaking stories from pit road, beginning with Jamie Little. And that new officiating procedure has a lot of these teams on high alert tonight. I talked to Kevin Harvick's crew chief, Rodney Childers, and he said his biggest concern tonight is that his guys will jump over the wall too soon. If they do that, that'll lead to a penalty, and we all know a penalty could be the difference between winning and losing tonight. Matt? Jamie, to try and ensure a penalty free night going over the wall, many teams, including Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s in the offseason, changed some aspects of their workout program, focusing primarily on improving leg strength. Some teams even adding hurdles to their program, trying for that burst of energy going over the wall. In fact, one picker coach told me it's almost like a page out of the 80s, where then and now success is going to be all about airtime. Chris Neville. 
Matt, Denny Hamlin has won this race twice, and tonight he could do it with his new crew chief, Dave Rogers. And before Dave Rogers climbed up on the pit box, he told me the strategy that he's looking at is he's got two options. He's either going to come early before that la caution lap, uh, lap 25, or he's going to come right before we go back to green and try and do this in one stop. Should be interesting to see how all these strategies play out. Mike? Thanks, Chris. A lot of different thoughts on when to make what teams hope will be their only pit stop of the night. The all new Toyota Camry leads them around as we get ready to race in Daytona and pick up the first NASCAR checkered flag of Daytona Speed Weeks. Here are tonight's Ford Track Facts. Nineteen seventy nine. This was the Bush Clash. Twenty laps, fifty miles. Flat out Buddy Baker. Won the first place prize money. Ford won it three times in a row. And Dale Jarrett, the last driver to win what's now the Sprint Unlimited and the Daytona 500 in the same year. That happened in 2000. Brought to you by Ford. Go further. Oh, heart's beating a little quick right now, Mike. It's that time of year, Daryl. Whoa, man. We're going to hear those famous words tonight? You got it, brother. They're coming. We're getting ready. All right, the pace boys car are looking at the, the green flag here. He's holding them back, holding them back. What's he going to do? Here we go, green flag, buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys! One car down to the inside below the line. That is Hamlin. They were three wide. He did not gain position below the line. Comes back up, but still four wide for a moment. Mid pack. Yeah, Greg Biffle actually forced Denny Hamlin, the 11 car, down there just a teeny bit. But as you said, no harm, no foul. He didn't gain anything. And what he did gain, he gave back. Paul Menard made a good choice choosing the outside lane for the start. He leads lap one. Yeah, it took almost that entire lap for that outside line to prevail, a lot because of the push from the white car, Brad Keselowski, in the two. Menard, Keselowski, Dillon. The front three, then Harvick and Kane, Truex and Logano. And Mike, one thing I think we're going to have unfold here, about 15, 18 laps, if your driver calls in and says, I got a happy car, that's going to change what you might decide to do strategy-wise. If your car's evil and you can't drive it, that's going to change what you do strategy-wise. And it's going to take about 15, 18 laps to find out. Chevy Ford, Chevy up front, that orange car stuck in the middle. That's Carl Edwards' new ride for Joe Gibbs Racing, a Toyota. We may have started this race two by two, but we have all 25 drivers separated by just a little over a second right now. Remember that Remember that bubble of air? Well, it's pretty big right now. I mean, we're three wide, about six rows deep there behind those top five drivers. And, and, and you can do that. It's, it's, that's all, it's about all you can do here, but you can do it as long as everybody minds their manners. The man on the move is Tony Stewart, number 14. He's brought his Chevrolet from 22nd to 8th in just two laps. Kozlowski had a look at Paul Menard's lead. Couldn't get alongside. I think what you're seeing with Brad, he ran up on the back of Paul Menard in the 27. Then he fell off of him, already trying to think about what I might do on the last lap. I know another driver on the move. He's in that outside line. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88 car started back in the 24th position. He's already up to seventh. I Keselowski's said, coming. He wants the lead. I said by five laps that to Tony Stewart, Dale Jr., those guys at the back of the pack could be up at the front fighting for the lead, and they're going to be real close. Well, there you see Dale Earnhardt Jr., the white and blue car on the outside there, right on the outside of Truex in the 78. I really think that 88 car, Dale Jr.'s, is one of the fastest cars in the field. I watched him practice. He's got a really fast car. Who will lead at the line? Can Keselowski lead this lap? No. Austin Dillon helps his Richard Childress Chevrolet teammate Paul Menard hold the lead. And there's Martin Truex uh, Jr. in the 78 down there on the bottom, kind of lining up behind Keselowski in the two car there. That outside looks pretty good, though. That's got a lot of momentum as they come off turn two. 
and Earnhardt and that blue and white 88 snuggles right up to the bumper of Austin Dillon. I Got a good you, runoff too. You, I just think that Greg Ives and Dale Earnhardt Jr. I think you, I know you thought he and uh, Latart were good together. Wait till you see what these two kids do together. Now the two Ganassi cars, the one and the 42, McMurray and Larson come up the outside behind Dale Jr. Remember now in practice that 78 car had an engine problem. They fixed it. They didn't have to change it. Looks like they fixed it good. Yeah, Kyle Larson in that 42 car on the outside. He started tailing Charlie. He's already up inside the top 10. It's kind of the way it works on these restrictor plate tracks. It's like a yo-yo. You go to the front. If you can stay there, great. But most likely you'll go to the back and then try to get back to the front again. Darrell, everyone had an urgency to get to the front. But if you are mired in the middle, is it frustration or are you searching? Well, you're in the middle of the, you're in the eye of the storm. I can tell you that because that's usually where the trouble is. You see that wad of cars uh, back there all kind of running three wide. That's a dangerous place to be, boys. Right with Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car right now. He's in the 14th position. This is the first time he has drafted with this car. All single car runs in last night's practice sessions. He's right behind Tony Stewart. And now the 41 of Kurt Busch to the outside. Danica Patrick just ahead of Busch. Things are at about this point in the run, seven laps, seven to ten laps, your car will start to go through a transition. The tires will be at full. They'll be built up as much as you're going to. Fuel burns off a little bit. Great run right here by the 20 car, Matt Kenseth, going to the bottom, looking for the lead here. Can he get up there with the Kozlowski? They're trying. Now Kozlowski has a little bit of help on the bottom from Matt Kenseth's Toyota. Can he push that forward to the front? Wow, almost too close to call, but Menard led that lap. And Austin Dillon in that black and white number three, he got caught in the middle and went all the way from the front almost to the back of this pack. You know, when the weather's cool like this, the, the cars, the handle stays with the car much longer than it does when it's hot and sunny and the track's slick. Tonight, track's got a lot of grip. These cars should handle good all the way through the run. Now, Kozlowski breaks out in front in his Ford. Ford, Toyota, Chevy, one, two, three. Well, Mike, you know, in practice, we saw a lot of speed out of the Fords, more than uh, what we normally see. And there's Kozlowski who charges out front and uh, looks pretty comfortable there. First driver besides Paul Menard to lead a lap tonight. Menard's hanging tough on that outside. Got Dale Jr. in the 88 right there with him. That outside looks like it might be struggling a little bit, though, as we get into this run. Brad Keselowski's last lap was his fastest lap of the race. 45.34 seconds. As he brings Kenseth and Truex in the 78 to turn three. Yeah, Darrell, you can see that inside line just, just gaining a little more, a little more further out front. Yeah, I think once uh, the tires heat up and everything, the inside is, is going to look pretty good here for a while. Eight laps complete, nine laps complete in Daytona. Brad Keselowski's Ford out front.
Sports Unlimited is sponsored by Sprint. Bring us your Verizon or AT&T bill and we'll cut your rate plan in half. Visit Sprint.com forward slash half price. 12 laps complete. They're in the back straightaway. Martin Truex Jr. from Mayetta, New Jersey has come to the front. Matt Kenseth put his Toyota out front to lead one lap. Show you that pass as he went to the outside to take the lead from Brad Keselowski. But by the time they got to the other end of the speedway, Truex went top to bottom to take the lead and he not got, look back. Yeah, he got the run down off the banking and it really uh, propelled him out into the lead, which he has been able to hold very well. But he has done some serious blocking to stay there, I'll tell you that. Dale Earnhardt Jr. now in second being challenged by Kenseth right there, Matt. Mike T.J. Majors, a spotter, told Junior from the drop of the green that the outside was working well. That's where people were able to pass. But then he could see, like D.W. mentioned, the bottom line was starting to come in. He was going to try to get him a hole, and he did. From 24th to 3rd for Earnhardt. Yeah, for a minute, I thought Dale Earnhardt Jr. was going to drop down behind Matt Kenseth in that yellow 20, but he went back up behind Truex in the 78. Yeah, we got teammates there working together now with the Kenseth and the 11 car of Hamlin. That's a, that's a potent pair. All right, back to the pits and Jamie. And Paul Menard, who started on pole, thinks he may have a vibration. They're keeping an eye on it right now, but he fell back to 10th, and he continues to fall. Back to 13th now. Remember Earnhardt's pre-race interview as he moves up to second spot when he said, well, in that first 25 laps, we'll see if we can pass a few. He's darn near past them all. Yeah, and, and, I, and most of the guys told me they wanted to be in the front. They just felt like they could do more from, the, from being in the lead than they could try to pass somebody. Back to Jamie's interview on Paul Menard. That pretty much gonna, will dictate, I think, his strategy at lap 25. He's going to want to get four tires and see if that's what's vibrating. All right, Darrell, 15 laps into this run. Yep. What's happening with these tires and the precise, laser-sharp handling of these cars in the first few laps? What's going to happen? Well, to this is when you hope your car got better. This is when you hope the tire pressure build up and the car starts to handle better. If it's not, then you're going to have to have some work on that thing when we come to the caution with 25 laps. So, that, that again, that's going to kind of tell me what who's got a good car and who doesn't. In the first nine laps, we had but one lead change. In the last six laps, we've had four more. Sixteen complete as they come by. Martin Truex Jr. out front. Who might stop before the caution? Who might wait? We'll find out.
Sprint Unlimited is sponsored by Ford F-150. Introducing the all-new Ford F-150, the future of tough. Martin Truex Jr. led one lap in all of 2014. That was at Talladega. But he's been out front now for the last nine circuits with Dale Earnhardt Jr. right in his wake and then Kevin Harvick. Hey, Mikey, you think these guys are just kind of on a, what, a little Saturday night cruise here? Uh -huh. Not really working that hard, right? I I'm a nervous wreck, Daryl. <laughs> this is so intense, and these tires are just getting worse and worse. I see the cars moving around. I'm listening to some of the chatter on the radio, and the drivers are talking about the tires have passed their optimum. They're beginning to slip and slide. Even the best drivers in the world are struggle with cars slipping and sliding, trying to run three wide. If we make it to the caution flag, Wow, that's going to be amazing to me. Yeah, I, I tell you, Mike, I watch them go through the travel here and down toward turn one. The cars are tail happy. I mean, these guys are working the wheel. They are working as hard as I think I've ever seen them work to keep up in this pack the way they are. Yeah, Jamie McMurray told us last night in an interview that he felt like this racetrack had lost some grip from last year. Double file toward the back, single file up front behind Martin Truex. Don't forget Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Bring in your Verizon or AT&T bill and turn in your old phone. Visit a Sprint retail store or Sprint.com slash half price. Okay, Mike, now the guys are saying, all right, we're coming to a caution here in three more laps. Whoa, oh, trouble. Oh, trouble. And around goes Brad Keselowski That's off of Kyle Larson into the wall. Slamming on the brakes behind him. Everybody gets by. Contact, I believe, with Kyle Larson. Sent Keselowski into the outside wall and spinning. Bit of damage on Kyle Busch, perhaps, from that one. Yeah, Brad's car is pretty well destroyed. Just trying to limp it back to the garage. I can't tell about the 18. Apparently, he had some contact with something, with someone. That's junk. Not sure if the 18 has any damage or not. I think he may have just had to check up. Well, Michael and I were just talking about how the cars are really, at this point in this run, are pretty evil and the tail, they're tail happy, jumping all over the place. Right here, it looks like Kyle Larson said, I think I got an opening to, or a hole to get into. Wasn't quite enough room. Came into the left front fender of the two car. Keselowski sent him in the wall. Well, that's where it got dicey when he was coming back up on the racetrack in front of all these drivers. I see, see what happened to the 18. Yeah, he, uh, he had to take evasive action through the, through the grass. About 22 right here, 22. Oh. Larson moves up just yep. that much, he makes just, contact. Yep. And Kozlowski did not strike the outside wall until just then into the safer barrier. And Austin boy, Dillon. shades of last fall at Talladega yep. under caution. Austin Dillon gets in the back of Kyle Busch. Boy, right across the nose almost of Matt Kenseth's number 20 car. Exactly. And of course, that splitter digs in, that front end just goes airborne and up the track he goes, how he missed those other cars, I have no idea. Now, race or director David missed, Hoots, Actually, how they missed him. Uh, has told the drivers and teams this will be the caution that was planned for lap 25 because we will go through lap 25 getting this cleaned up. We have 23 complete right now. And where that throws a wrinkle in that strategy we talked about, we said if the caution comes at lap 25, we may go back racing lap 28 or 29. We could go back racing a little earlier than that now. That's a brace, but it's not supposed to be right there. No. <laughs> it's, he's picked up some uh, debris of probably off of Keselowski's car in the front of the 15 car here. All right, we listened in on Kyle Larson. Get up too far right there? Or? No, I didn't get up too far at all. Oh, yeah, no, you didn't. Never mind. Mm. We, we always, I always liked it. My first impression was the 42 moved up on the two, and they made contact. 
but sometimes when we look at these things more than once. Let's look again. But I just, I, I don't see anything other than what I saw the first time. And it looked like the 42 moved up and got into the left front of the two. No, and I was looking especially for Keselowski coming down the track. I did not see that. I didn't either. No. And I didn't see any contact from behind to cause that to happen. So I think it was just a mis just misjudge that opening. You know, Daryl, his spotter is Derek Nealon. And when you think about it, they're coming off a of turn four and where they're coming down at straightaway, you're actually coming right at the spotters. Yep. So Larson's car pretty much undamaged. Clint Boyer picking up a piece of debris, fixing the nose on his car on pit road. And once they get things clear, they can open pit road, which remains closed. So Boyer for pitting before the pit road was opened will start at the tail end when we go back to green. And we've got a great deal of fluids uh, on pit road. You see the stay dry truck going down through here, uh, putting the stay dry over the oil that's been dropped down, particularly down where Kozlowski came off the track. So we got to get that cleaned up. So Larry, to me, the longer we run under caution, the happier I am. It, it puts them back on their strategy possibly, yes. Exactly. Brad Kozlowski had never finished worse than fourth in the Sprint Unlimited. He is now out of the race. We're under caution in Daytona. Welcome back to Daytona. Pit road is open. Brad Kozlowski released from a check at the care center. But everybody else, here they come. Matt Yoakum. Clint Boyer's team, not the only team concerned about damage to their car. Possibly Tony Stewart hit his teammate Danica Patrick in the right front. Jeff Gordon hit a significant piece of metal. Meanwhile, chassis adjustments on the Dale Earnhardt Jr. 88 machine, packing it full of fuel. He's away. Chris. Martin Truex Jr. very happy with this race car and set. In fact, he's saying it's unbelievable. Only concern is temps are a little high. Jamie? Kevin Harvick, four tires, an adjustment on the left and right side to help the handling, saying he wants to be anywhere but the bottom. Mike? Dale Earnhardt Jr. 
picks up a position on pit road with a new crew chief and three new over the wall crewmen. No tires for junior and he leads them off the pit lane after 27 laps. Sprint Unlimited is sponsored by Sprint. We'll cut your rate plan in half. Visit Sprint.com forward slash half price. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Budweiser. Budweiser still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. So because we did not make it to lap 25, no one was able to pull the strategy of pitting before the caution. Kyle Busch pulling away. While we are under caution, will anybody come back and top off for fuel? Brad Keselowski out of the race after this. You see Brad right here, here comes the 42. Bam. You're watching the Sprint Unlimited, only on Fox. One lap to go. Stewart, Boyer, Biffle, McMurray come to pit road. So does Edwards. And many more. Stenhouse, Dillon, Kyle Busch are all in. Casey Mears. Ryan Newman. Danica Patrick. All getting a splash of fuel. Tony Stewart was there a little longer. They That's just a splash. Yeah, they did so is Austin that. Dillon. Right in front of Tony Stewart. This is my this is my strategy right here. Come in, top it up, give you give yourself a chance. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt Jr. got out of the pits first with a little bit different strategy. Yeah, I guess I listened to Michael Waltrip talking about listening to some radios and talking about how drivers were saying that they were starting to slide around. And already, you know, you had 20 something laps on your tires. I just believe I would have at least gotten two right side tires. Yeah, we, we know Junior's car is fast, starting to backslide, uh, take, takes the lead, but you got to put tires on it. 
Yeah, I agree, Daryl. When I drove the car earlier today, I was on the track, and these cars are so precise. You move the wheel just a little bit, and they stick like glue and turn real quickly. As the tires wear out and the grip goes away, those movements that you have to make in the draft can get you sideways, can jeopardize you being able to keep your foot on the floorboard. I don't know about this call right now. New crew chief on the box decided to take a gamble. Daryl, you said earlier, gambling's what's going to win this race. To me, that's not a good gamble. Well, yeah, I think so. But I think if you think about where Greg Ives came from, they kind of always were in a tire conserving mode in the Xfinity series. So maybe he, maybe he thinks that he can get away with it. Penalties during pit stops. The debut of NASCAR's new pit road officiating system sends a signal to that call center when the cameras on the roof detect a possible infraction. Jamie McMurray was called for an infraction, his pit crew over the wall too soon, and Ryan Newman's number 31 driving through too many pit boxes before reaching his stall. They will start in the back. Yeah, you can't go over the wall until your car is one pit away. You can't drive through more than three boxes entering or exiting your pit box. What I like about that system real quickly, instead of all those officials being on pit road, they're over there in that truck. They went through a lot of speedy dry coming out of the tri-oval from Paul Menard's car, and we're back under green two by two with 46 laps to go. Boy, they, I, I tell you, it takes it. Greg Ives. <laughs> He's got he's to be sitting on a hot stove right now, guys, because, I mean, this is a gamble right here, unless he has some strategy that we haven't thought of. Well, it's a gamble in two ways. They, have, they did not take any fresh tires and did not come back to pit road to top off. Yep. <laughs> Double wide off the corner, Jimmy Johnson looking low. Or excuse me, that's Martin Truex looking to the low side of Dale Jr. Nothing there. Eric Almarola up for the fourth spot, second row outside. Well, we saw Paul Menard, uh, you know, the start of this race, get up there and lead it. He's up there again, Larry. That thing looks fast when it got tires on it. Yeah, Paul Menard at 27, they took two fresh tires on that pit stop. Almarola up high, gets shuffled out of the line. They move on without him. You and we have been waiting all winter to crank it up. Two laps complete, everyone trying to fight to the front, but a single line has formed on the outside, led by Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's uh, back to his old self here, his old role of the Pied Piper. Follow me, everybody, and so far they are. I just don't know how long he can hang on to the lead with those uh, tires with already got 30, uh, 33 laps on them. It's a five-car breakaway out front as we check with Chris Neville. Well, Mike, Brad Keselowski has checked out the infield care center. Brad, good to see you're okay. We've taken a look at the replay a few different times. What would you, what'd you see from your perspective? Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it, to be honest. Uh, but obviously, I made contact with uh, the 42 and the 22. And I, I couldn't tell if somebody made contact with me from behind and ended up in the, uh, in the grass there. And uh, when all that happened, it, uh, you know, it's not good. <laughs> it tears the front end up on these cars quick. So just part of, uh, part of racing at Daytona. And, uh, Really happy with the speed in the Miller Lite Ford. So, you know, we got a lot of racing left in speed weeks. This is uh, just a preliminary, and we'll be ready to go when it counts for the 500. All right, we'll see you next week.
Kozlowski 25th tonight. First time he's finished worse than fourth. Now the single file train extends all the way back to the 42 of Kyle Larson, 11th place. Well, just remember, I mean, we've, we've got to run to 75 laps here, so we've got a pretty good ways to go. Uh, so you're, maybe you're playing a little strategy right now, a little positioning, maybe you're saving fuel. Let's talk about this fuel. Dale Earnhardt Jr. won the Daytona 500 a year ago, and he ran the last 50 laps without pitting. But what helped him and aided him, 17 cautions. It's a two to one ratio, so you take eight and a half laps off that 50, he ran 41 and a half laps realistically. Add to that the possibility of overtime. Green white checker up to three attempts, and this race could go considerably more. Well, remember than 75 laps. Last year this thing was a crash fest, too. Yes. We only had, I think, eight cars that finished the race. So uh, that's something you got to consider as well. Eight out of 18 drivers were running at the finish last year. Tonight, only one car out of the race, and that was Brad Keslowski, who you just heard from. You know what, Greg Ives is sitting over here right now, kind of smiling, saying, how do you like me now? Well, in the first 25 laps, it was a fight to the front. This looks very orderly. It does. Yeah, we've not had a lot of movement since the restart. Four of the top five drivers that restarted in the top five, they're still there. I know Dale Jr. has a lot of confidence in Greg Ives. He said he's going to really be something special. I've watched him with uh, Chase Elliott in the Xfinity Series, and I'm really excited about working with him. By golly, so far, so good. Yeah, he was the lead engineer also for Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canals when they won those four consecutive, five consecutive Sprint Cup Series championships. Now, the two drivers that sustained penalties on those stops, Jamie McMurray has rebounded to 10th after restarting 21st, while Ryan Newman has just gained three positions, 24th to 21st. There's McMurray's number one in front of Joey Logano and just, Jeff Gordon. I just noticed Mike on the grill of the 88 car down here last two year in the 500. Remember, he picked up that huge piece of bear bond at the end of the race. I think I see a little trash on the grill of his car right now. It's a little early uh, to start picking up that kind of debris. You couldn't watch those gauges. There's definitely a couple of small pieces of debris there in that radiator opening. And, and the problem, and you know this, Larry, is you run this thing on the absolutely closed up to the max. What it, you, you have as little opening as you think you need to keep the engine cool to run this race. That could be a problem. And we are only halfway. And, and see, that here's the thing. Did it, how could Greg Ives predicted that? Got a great strategy leading the race, and all of a sudden a piece of debris may mess up that strategy. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is your leader in Daytona.
Sprint Unlimited is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. 41 laps, we have a new leader, Martin Truex Jr. Dropped underneath Dale Earnhardt Jr. and put his number 78 Chevrolet back out front. Here's a look at it. Jr. was looking for someone to get in front of him to help the air pressure to remove that piece of debris from the grill. Here was the discussion. We're going hot, real hot, real fast, real hot, real fast. Yep, yeah, a little bit of debris on the grill there. Let's be ready here, guys. How about I have to give up the lead, I guess? I'm 275, 280. They have a water temperature gauge and a water pressure gauge, and they were both going He's red. He's on pit road. I mean, I, I didn't think that was going to come off. Matt? And Greg Ives could see on their in-car camera shot that that water pressure gauge then started to go red so he told them they were going to have to come they cleaned the grill they also told him whatever you do don't slide the tires i tell you they didn't change tires again they didn't do anything but get the debris off now he's going to get off pit road and beat the leaders coming around but the problem he's going to be so much slower by himself but he'll be the only driver one lap down he could get the free pass if that caution comes out and be back on the lead lap Three wide again, Casey Mears, top to bottom to pass Ricky Stenhouse. Trying to get a little help on the draft. Mears alone on the inside, trying to move his number 13 forward. I think a guy that's uh, you got to just give a shout out to is that Jamie McMurray in the one car. Remember, he had a pit road penalty. Started at the back, just like Dale Jr. did at the start of this race, and has worked his way into second place. From 21st on the restart, Joey Logano trying to give him a shove with that number 22 Ford. Chris? Well, Martin Truex Jr. was also talking about temperatures prior to that first stop, but the team cleaned off the grill, so his temps look good right now. But one thing he is talking about on the radio is he's picking up a vi vibration. He thinks it's a possible wheel weight. Truex the leader, Gordon second. Menard, the 27, who led the early laps, trying to come up the inside. McMurray comes down to cover the spot and goes back up high in the number one. You know what you tell the driver? Uh, got a little vibration right now in this race? Hang on to her, bud. And you know the thing about Jamie McMurray in that one, because Keith Rodden, his crew chief, knew he was going to have to start at the tail end. He was one of the drivers that came in and topped off with fuel before we went back racing. Four Chevrolets and Greg Biffle's Ford, the number 16, with Joey Logano and Eric Almirolo also in Fords. Trying to work with him Whoa. there. Oh, and McMurray goes around oh, in front of huge, the field. Huge wreck. Paul Menard is in it. Clint Boyer is in it. Menard is hit by Casey Kane. His car is all torn up. And McMurray bounces off the wall, pulls away. There's Tony Stewart. His car stopped. There's Menard. And McMurray heads McMurray's toward the garage. Car, I mean, a lot of good cars here. This, this reminds me of last year. We had a very similar situation last year. Huge benefit for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, in that 88 yeah, car. I guess. Kurt Busch heading for pit road in a shower of sparks. At 200 miles an hour, when one car gets sideways in front of two thirds of the field, this is the result. Well, we'll see what started this one. Uh, we're coming off turn four here, all bottled up, bunched up. All it takes is just a little bit of a tap from somebody from behind. See right there, it looked like Greg Biffle may have gotten into the back of the one car. Not sure, Jamie McMurray, that's in him around, and then it's on from there. He just starts taking out cars left and right. Biffle got into McMurray, but did Joey Logano give Biffle a shove into McMurray? There's our champ, Kevin Harvick. He got damaged. Danica, come look at her come through here. I don't think she ever makes any contact with anybody. No, she doesn't. She's clean. Kyle Busch almost missed it. He got it in the left front. And Menard got hit about four times. What we got to watch is, is the, the one and the 16. You got to see if the, and the 22. It's, it, it's really kind of hard to tell. It, we know the 16 got into the back of the one. I think that's what started it. But did McMurray get into the, uh, did the Logano get into the back of Biffle? 
McMurray started to slide, then caught traction, and the car hooked to the right. I believe Matt Kenseth in that 20 car made it through as well. Let's ride with Jimmy Johnson. Right at the end, the 48 gets into the 11. Almost made it through. Just about had it cleared. Slowing down, he wasn't going that fast, but. Denny Hamlin, winner in a three wide finish here last year. He's out of the race. The yeah. cars that are running are up in turns three and four. They're going to be brought to pit road and stopped in their pit stalls. Watch Matt Kenseth drive through this. It's right behind Danica. Danica makes a nice move there. 20 car goes with her. The C parted right there wow. for him, and he was able, and Matt Kenseth in the 20 car able to slide right through there. Now we listened in on the number 16, Greg Biffle. I'm not loose. He was the one who was loose. Well, that would indicate that if McMurray lost forward drive, that might have carried Biffle into McMurray. You just know. never know, Mike. Nope. Did McMurray start wiggling in front of Biffle and then McMurray with the air off of his rear spoiler, Biffle right up under him? Did that send him around? Did they make contact? You don't really know until one of them tells you. From what we see, what appears to us, it looked like the 16 got into the back of the one car of McMurray, but maybe he didn't. Under caution for a huge pileup that began when Jamie McMurray got turned sideways in front of the field.
At the moment, the Sprint Unlimited with Martin Truex Jr., your leader, and under red, meaning cars can be worked on. You know, last year with 18 cars in the field, 15 were involved in crashes. We just had a, a 12 driver wreck fest with Michael Walter, Chris Meyer standing by, and under red now, actually, you can work on your cars. It looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to get new tires. <laughs> Finally got four tires on the 88. Everybody can relax now. We also <laughs> saw Martin Tricks. I think getting tires and gas right now is the way to set yourself up to win this race. Early in the going, we saw some bold moves in the pack, guys flying to the front. The second segment of the race they were lined up and it was difficult to pass see what the third run at this thing brings greg biffle triggering that with jamie mcmurray saying that he thought mcmurray was already loose we heard that on the radio chris neville is uh, standing by talking with one of the drivers chris yeah jamie mcmurray already back in the garage area and jamie you were running right near the front most of tonight but one thing biffle said on the radio after the incident is he said the your car looked pretty loose well it was when he had my back tires off the ground it's it's hard to hang on to it he was he was helping me, and it, it happened two or three times before, and it's just part of it. You When you get a big run like that, you've got to get to the guy and start pushing, because if you don't, you lose all your all your momentum. So um, it's just part of it. You know, you're, Everyone was racing really hard tonight. It was actually a lot of fun out there. Our, um, our McDonald's Chevy was good. I, I really wanted to be on the top, but at one point I was able to make the bottom work, and the 22 was working really well with me. Um, it's just when Gray got into the back of me, I just couldn't hang on to it anymore. Well, Jamie Mack in good spirit. Obviously had a very fast race car tonight. We talked about how hard it is to hang on to these cars, especially after the tires get a few laps on them, and you definitely can't hang on to them when somebody's pushing you. It was a big run by Biffle off turn four. He needed just to ease up next to Jamie. He got Jamie a little bit harder than I think he meant to, and it turned him around. Well, you can tell it's early. Drivers aren't getting angry about anything, right? Even <laughs> Koslowski and uh, him. Uh, and got, we, got, so we got Boyer. He'll say something okay, crazy, well, right? Matt Yoakum is standing by with Clint Boyer. And we do have Clint Boyer, and you've had a chance to watch the replay and replay again. Give us your take. Well, I mean, it's just everybody's, the cars really pull up, you know, and suck up pretty good. So you're, you're pushing and beating and banging on each other. And I mean, it just, uh, Denny and I kind of moved up there. I was making some hay in the center and you can kind of see, I saw a car backwards and then I hit it <laughs> right there. And then, uh, yeah, you know, Brett, he told me, he was like, get low, get low. And low is in the grass. And every time these things don't seem to like to go through the grass very well. So, um, not the way we wanted to get started, but it's kind of a bummer. I was just starting to have some fun and get up through them. And, but the good news is we got a long race, a big race coming up next week, and we'll go go at it again. Get the bad luck out this weekend. Chris? Idea. All right, thanks. Those in-car cameras really hmm. give you a feel for what it's like. Yeah, the, the whole track just gets blocked on you. If you're Boyer, from the top of the car, it looks like you can see pretty good what's going up on up ahead. But when they start stopping right in front of you, it's really difficult to make a move, especially in the trioval because of the fact that there is grass to the left. This the 37th running of this race and the Sprint Unlimited. The most cars we've ever had, 28, the fewest seven. 25 drivers in this one, and we take a look at some early action. Michael, you noticed right Right away, and you said guys will want to get to the front, those that are not, but four wide. How are you going to do four wide? But these cats pulled it off. Like I said earlier, the best in the world. And to run four wide around Daytona on fresh tires, I'll give you that. But as the tires get hot, it's harder to do. But the guy that was strong early was Dale Jr. He led 13 laps, started 24th, and was on his way. Got up into the front lap 23. Larson gets into Brad Keselowski, and Keselowski out of this race. He yeah, was okay, Lark though. Yeah, he was fine. Larson just said that he didn't do anything wrong, but the replays look like that maybe uh, Brad was holding his line, and Larson came up into him, caused Brad to have a big crash. And then Junior kind of fallen back and had to pit. Got some debris on the nose. His temperatures went up to 280, so they had to come to pit road. And as fate would have it, just as he left pit road, they all pile up right Right here when Greg Biffle gets into the back of McMurray. Big break for Dale Jr. Not such a good break for a lot of these guys. And you see Jimmy Johnson involved, just released from the Care Center. Okay, Casey Kane as well. Other drivers, Kevin Harvick, uh, Jamie McMurray, of course, uh, Tony Stewart, uh, Clint Boyer, who we heard from, Kyle Busch as well. Just a melee in the trial, but it's the hardest place on the track to miss a crash because you have no idea what's going on up ahead of you. You're blind as you come into the trial. You can't see what's happening. So Martin Truex Jr. with 21 laps led so far the best of the evening, the first on-track competition of the 2015 NASCAR season.
and already a wreck fest with at least 14 cars involved in crashes 14 of the 25 and there goes uh, Casey Kane's car some of those being towed. Paul Menard very strong early in this race. I'll be interesting to see what kind of repairs if they can make to Kevin Harvick's car. He just brushed the outside wall kind of got squeezed by Jamie McMurray. You can see them they're repairing the left front. Really interesting Chris. We talked so much about how important aerodynamics here is at Daytona and his cars tore all to pieces but don't be surprised if old Harv don't get that thing up in the middle of the front pack and go at it. Freaky fast and uh, focused. You know, last year's race, as we said, the number of crashes, there were just eight cars left at the finish. So where we are with 27 to go, talk about your strategy with whom you're going up against and the cars that have damage. We're just going to see crazy racing again. Remember the start of the race, three, four wide on those fresh tires. A lot of guys pitted, got their tires, new tires, gas, strategies out the window. It's all about putting it to the floorboard and getting to the front. If you hang around in the back, you'll get bit. I think you got to go in a hurry, and that's what uh, it'll be fun to see how much Kevin Harvick can do with that torn up car. And as you said right before, that caution was going to come out at 25. We may not make it the way guys are racing, and they didn't without a wreck. Eight different leaders, 11 different lead changes, and the wreck fest on Saturday night. But NASCAR on Fox continues live from Daytona. The Sprint Unlimited in just a moment. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Next Sunday, a week from tomorrow, 57th running of the Great American Races. You'll see it right here on Fox from Daytona and Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to become the first driver 20 years to win back-to-back -back Daytona 500s. We, of course, have qualifying tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern. We'll also have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Brian France, chairman of NASCAR, uh, during that qualifying. And, oh, Michael, you'll be a part of the qualifying as well. Let's check in. Chris Neville is standing by with Paul Menard, who's led seven laps tonight. Chris? Yeah, he led seven laps tonight, just released from the infield care center. And, Paul, obviously you had a fast car, but everything just went wrong there. What you see? Uh, yeah, the one car just got turned, I guess, by, uh, I, I thought it was a 22, but I guess the 16 did it. Um, yeah, he just came across my nose, and I thought he was going to keep going to the inside, and then he hooked, uh, came back right, and I piled into him, uh, and they got hit, you know, 14 other times. So, um, car was really good. The uh, the peak Menard Chevy was uh, was fast. We made one little chassis adjustment at the pit stop, and uh, the car came to life a little bit better. So, uh, we learned some things for tomorrow. Thanks, Paul. And thank you very much. Something to think about, Michael Waltrip, in the last seven races, the leader of this with five to go has only won 
the race one time. So it's really going to heat up, but we still have a little ways before we get there. Uh, yeah, and listen to what Paul Menard said. Got hit 14 times. We're talking a crash <laughs> that happened while these guys are running 200 miles an hour, and they get out, and they're able to joke a little bit about it because they know it was a special event. They're racing for a trophy tonight. They're racing to try to figure out how to position their, their cars in order to win the Daytona 500. This is a 200-mile-an-hour test session, and these guys learned a lot tonight. They learned that you can pull up. You heard Clint Boyer say that. They learned that the tires go away a bit, and Dale Jr. was trying to prove that his tires weren't going to go away. If he can handle like that next Sunday, that'll be a big deal. Yeah, Chris Neville busy and caught up. The 11 got a little airborne with Denny Hamlin, and Chris is standing by with Denny. Yeah, very busy down here at the Infield Care Center. Denny Hamlin won this race twice, and good to see you came out of here. You're good. The back is good, but obviously this wreck caught a lot of people off guard. Yeah, well, not the drivers. They knew that was coming. Uh, it was a matter of time that uh, that we were going to wreck. We were side drafting so aggressively, really from the first lap of the race. I, I've, it's been a long time since I've seen that aggressive a driving from the start. I got some awesome hang time there, by the way. Uh, just a tough day for our FedEx Express Camry. Just, uh, you know, we we're in the middle of the pack, and that's kind of where this stuff all starts and happens. So, um, you know, we were trying to get to the front to protect our protect track position as soon as we could because I knew this was coming, but uh, just couldn't get there quick enough. Thanks, Denny. Jamie. And Rodney Childers on the pit box for Kevin Harvick. His guys continue to work. A lot of damage here. What is the extent of it, Rodney? Well, the good thing is all the wheels and tires are still in the right direction. The steering wheel's straight and then, uh, just a little bit of cosmetic stuff. It's got a little character now and uh, we ain't got to worry about tearing it up the rest of the night. So uh, we've had a fast Jimmy John Chevy all night. Kevin's done a good job. The guys have done a good job on pit road, and uh, we'll just have to see what we got from here. You still believe you can win from sixth? Well, last week we had uh, it was towed out about an inch, and we finished fifth. So I think uh, this is a lot better than what we had last year. Still smiling. It's all about fun. Let's go back to the Hollywood <laughs> Hotel. All right. That's going to be fun to watch. I want to see that torn up race car that Kevin Harvick's willing to get up there and battle. But I'm really impressed with the speed of the 78. Martin Trex Jr. was able to make some big moves as he was racing for the lead. He could be the favorite. Yep, the yellow is out. Martin Trex Jr., you just saw him there, led one lap all of last year, has led 21 laps tonight. Let's head back upstairs, rejoin Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris. Uh, drivers are required to go to the care center when they stop their car and get out of it not in their pit stall or in the garage area. And that's why Chris Neville was, and was able to catch up with all those drivers back there. It's a mandatory trip just to be checked out. Let's check in with the champ and see if he has any idea what his car uh, might look like. Hey, Harvest, DW, you got a copy there, my friend? Yes, sir. Uh, do you have any idea what your car looks like right now? It's got character, I, I believe. <laughs> um, the good news is the nose is not 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 got any damage and the tail doesn't have any damage so hopefully the sides being shoved in will just make it run faster i don't know how freaky fast it's going to be i think you may have to be a, a good drafting partner right now because uh, but i tell you what remember last a uh, couple years ago when kyle bush got done on the apron a couple of times tore his car up and he still won the race you still you're still in it son yeah yeah we're still definitely in it just proud of all my guys on my jimmy john's team uh fixing her up and i don't believe it'll be as bad as you think I love a driver. They're always so optimistic. I hope you're right. <laughs> hey, are you doing anything up there tonight or just drinking coffee and eating donuts? <laughs> you, you know me, bud. I just came to be a, I'm watching a race. I'm, I'm having a good time. <laughs> it's good because we're having a lot of fun sitting in here, too. This is way better than my couch. <laughs> All right, my friend. Uh, finish her off. You got, you got the piece there that can do it. Well, a little business to take care of first during those pit stops. Too many men over the wall. Kevin Harvick, Eric Almarola, Kurt, and Kyle Busch. So those four drivers will restart at the back. A 15-minute red flag period. Now we are back under caution. Martin Truex Jr. is the leader. Jeff Gordon running in second. Handicapped the field for the finish. I'm just looking at who's not working on a fender. I mean, you know, Harvick's got damage, the 41 has damage. I think Biffle could be a factor, and Logano. Yeah, the 88's okay. He had the pit under green for overheating, but he's back okay. So his car is clean. Yeah, Logano. So you heard Eddie DeHaan, Jeff Spotter, uh, kind of handicapping the damage to other cars to his driver. 
My favorite interview of that whole session, though, was uh, with, when the, they said, uh, Biffle said that McMurray's car was a little bit loose, and McMurray said, they're always loose when you got the back wheel jacked up off the ground. I love that. <laughs> And, Mike, I got a little house cleaning, a lot of crew chief changes. And, actually, Matt McCall is Jamie McMurray's crew chief. Yep. True crew chief. Keith Rodden is now over with Casey Kane. A lot of changes out during the offseason. Well, we'll see if we can finish with more than half the field on the racetrack. We were not able to do that last year. They started with their tempers and fenders intact. Things are different now with 28 laps to go. But you know what? The reason these drivers are out of their cars and kind of making jokes and cutting up about this is not a big surprise. You go into this race knowing that there's a good chance you're going to have a wreck like we've had tonight. And it's no points, no problem. This is, for all intents and purposes, an exhibition race. Exactly. It's for pride. Roughly 200,000 to the winner. Well, I do know this. It's Saturday night. We're under the lights. It's not a short track, but it looks like we got a little 25 lap shootout coming our way. At 200 miles an hour. Martin Truex selects the high side for this restart. That is the leader's choice of which lane he wants to lead at the green flag. That means Jeff Gordon must fall in on the inside of row number one. And from there on back, they're in order. Third place, Greg Biffle inside of row two next to Joey Logano. Kyle Larson and Casey Mears in row three. Danica Patrick and Matt Kenseth row four. Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards. Then Austin Dillon, Ryan Newman, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. back on the lead lap with that free pass. And contrary to what was going on earlier in the race, all of these drivers, four fresh tires, plenty of fuel to go to the end. Yeah, I, I tell you, that 78 car has been very impressive so far. The Martin Truex car, green flag back in the air. Let's get back to racing here, boys. I think this is when, this is kind of the point in the race where if Jeff Gordon's got anything, we're going to know it. He's not going to want to get to back in the pack. He's want to stay up there in the front if he can. But on the high side, Logano in the 22, giving Truex a shove off turn two and into the back straightaway. Clear by a car length, and he slides down in front of Gordon and back up in front of Logano. Well, I watched him earlier in the race, and he did a lot of that right there. He did a lot of blocking when he was leading earlier in the race, uh, almost to the point where it looked a little dangerous, but uh, it's working for him. Used to have a fellow on Long Island we called Three Lane Wayne. Kind of drove <laughs> like that. <laughs> he's not going to let in. He's not going to let anybody to the left of him or the right of him. Hey, Darrell, I think he's driving in the rearview mirror as much or more than he's driving out the windshield. Look, I guarantee you spend at least 75, 80 percent of your time looking behind you. Well, Truex is strong because no one's been able to gang up on him and pass him yet. Yeah, no, that's been a strong piece all night long. He's done this early. He did this earlier. Uh, there you go. Watch it. Watch Jeff. He's constantly looking back, looking back, looking back. You, you almost can sense what's in front of you. You kind of know what's going on in front of you, but you don't have any idea unless you keep your eyes on the rear who's making a run on you. Truex is playing roller coaster with the field. Up high, down low, sweep up high, drop to the bottom. Pass me if you can. Yeah. And so far, nobody can. And that's a huge turnaround from the performance of that team last year because they had a they didn't have a great year last year. Now they really only had one good thing happen for them for the most part. They sat on the outside of the front row for the Daytona 500. This year they promoted Cole Pern from team engineer to crew chief. He's up on the box calling the race for the New Jersey driver. But this reminds me a lot of the start of the race. It's like the high line is prevailing, but then what happened as we got into a run, a good group of drivers in their cars got a symbol on the bottom and then they started moving to the front. Well, Jeff Gordon right now, the way things are going, he needs to, he needs something good to happen. He needs to get something going here because he doesn't want these guys to get away from him. Man, there's only 23 laps to go and you, uh, you don't want to get that leader too far away from you. It's just coincidence that Truex was going top to bottom to top, and then I mentioned he was from New Jersey. Not everybody <laughs> in the Garden State drives like that, but a lot of them do. <laughs> Good point. You would know. I mean, you live up that Spent way. Spent a lot of time up there, yes. 
Tony Stewart trying to make something happen. Gets past Danica Patrick and slides up there behind Carl Edwards in his new orange Toyota. Darrell, you talked to Kevin Harvick under the pace laps. Remember, a lot of damage to that four car. He's back inside the top ten up there in eighth. And Larry, remember, he was one of the four cars that got penalized and had to restart at the rear. I think as long as, as he can stay in, you know, in the draft with these good cars, the body damage is not going to hurt him that much. His teammate, Kurt Busch, right behind. Danica Patrick just ahead, three of the four Stuart Haas Chevrolets. You see right there, Kevin went to the bottom to get around Danica Patrick up on the outside. Kurt Busch tried to go with him, but... Uh, <laughs> The rough side is dragging on the old four car, boys. As they come to the line, it'll be 21 laps to go in the Sprint Unlimited at Daytona. Sprint Unlimited is sponsored by Sprint. Bring us your Verizon or AT&T bill and we'll cut your rate plan in half. Visit Sprint.com forward slash half price. 18 laps to go in Daytona. New leader, Matt Kenseth. Took his Toyota top to bottom. It's like he threw out the sandbags, <laughs> grabbed another gear. Watch Mike, this. This is a power move at 200 miles an hour off in the corner changing lanes and hung on to that thing to get the lead. And Darrell, there wasn't a thing Martin Trex Jr. in that no. 78 could do about that. What do you, how do you defend that? You don't. You don't. <laughs> Tony Stewart drops to the bottom on Martin Truex, looking for second. Behind Kenseth on the inside, then Carl Edwards and Danica Patrick in that inside lane. And Kenseth moves up top to pick up Truex. You heard Eddie DeHaan talk about that 22 car. Thought he might be a pretty strong car. He and Greg Beffel and uh, Joey Logano's right there running third right now. Looking pretty good. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., beneficiary of the free pass on that caution. Got four tires and he's right back in play up on the outside behind Logano. I, I really think the 88 car is the fastest car on the track. If he can work his way up through here like he has so far, he's going to be the it's going to be a real battle between he, Kansas and the 78. 
Stewart for third on the inside battling Logano in the 22. Well, there's there something about getting a run off a of turn two over there that you can cut that thing to the bottom and really make, make some speed. I guess you use that banking to kind of come down the hill to get a good run. Boy, Joy Logano in that 22 is not bashful about pushing these guys around here. Nope. Wearing out that front bumper on that Penske Ford. One thing about it, when somebody's pushing you like that, you can't wave them off because you got your hands full. But, Daryl, I think you're right. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that blue 88, I think he could go, but the, right now there's nowhere for him to go. No, it's, it's kind of roadblocked right now, but I think he's pretty fast. I think what you got to start worrying about now is the laps running down. We're at 15. 15 to go. Jeff Gordon back in play. Right behind Carl Edwards in the 19 and right up the middle. Look at that. Whoa, Martin Truex made it happen right there in that 78. That's, da that's dangerous right there. Boy, that's just dangerous. But I think a lot of that was stimulated from Joy Logano in that 22. Gave him a good little bump right on the late exit of turn two. Yeah. That pulls him even with Edwards for second place, and they are three wide behind them. I'll tell you those Gibbs Toyotas, that 20 car is fast with Kansas. 19 got his teammate right there. Got to be pretty comforting. Look back and see your new teammate following you. Well, it's his new old teammate. They were teammates for many years at yep. Roush Fenway Racing in Fords. Now they are rejoined. In Toyota's at Joe Gibbs and Carl Edwards said that the person that's helped him most with his transition to the new team is the driver that number 20, his former teammate, Matt Kenseth. You know what Matt's saying back to Carl right now? I told you you're going to like this. <laughs> yeah, the biggest thing Carl Edwards said even before last year ended, he wanted to be a better teammate. Oh, no, Austin Dillon, Ricky Stenhouse pile up in turn four. And we are under caution again hmm. as Kenseth brings them beneath the yellow flag. And Danica Patrick to pit road. We we'll have to take a look, see what happened to Ricky Stenhouse. Uh, not sure what triggered this. A lot of damage to his Roush Fenway Ford, the number 17. Here he is, right side of your screen. Well, yeah, the, he just it looks like he may have lost the tire, Larry, or something might have happened to the car. Well, remember, a lot of damage on that 17 car from that last wreck, so that very well looks like what happened. Yeah, I mean, the car just starts to go with him. Uh, it, it could be aero. You know, the car did have damage. You're up in the pack like that, or it could have been a tire. It could have been anything, but he's definitely 17 started to spin. Now, because of the safety inner liners, the tires will look like they're up because but, the inner liners are, but the tire itself may be no. deflated. Watch, watch, watch. He goes up the hill a little bit. He tries to stay off of the 41 car. When he tries to turn down off of him, the car gets loose and spins out. And once again, hats off to Danica. She could have been right up in the middle of that, and she swerved around it, missed it, and uh, probably flat-spotted tires, but uh, she didn't wreck the car. And Kyle Larson in that 42, he said, I'm just going to stop. Do you make your mind up where you're going to land? There he goes. Oh, and Jeff Gordon missed that by an inch or less. There'll be 12 to go when they come by. Pit Road is open. Danica Patrick's car still under repair. And four cars toward the tail end of the field are coming in. Led by Jeff Gordon, Greg Biffle, Kyle Larson, and Ryan Newman. Matt? And Gordon's in. Al Gustafson had his spotter, Eddie DeHunt, take a look at the right side just to see how significant there was as far as damage, if there was any at all. They're saying the car looks pretty good. He's away. Yeah, it looks great, uh, man. I don't see anything. Maybe, maybe just scrubbed the side of it, but didn't bend it up or anything. So everyone who came to Pit Road got four fresh tires, and they'll tag the back of the field when we restart here in Daytona.
Thursday, the stakes don't get any higher as drivers go under the lights and fight for every position in their final chance to make the starting grid for the great American race, the Daytona 500. It's the Budweiser duel at Daytona, Thursday, 7 Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Our sprint unlimited. Race summary to this point, Martin Truex Jr. has led the most laps, 29, 13 for Dale Earnhardt Jr., and 16 cars have been involved in a crash one way or another. Joe Gibbs racing has done well here. Matt Kenseth has never won this event. He didn't have any wins last year, but right now he's your leader. Who do you like? Well, I picked Carl Edwards before the race started, and I love Carl, and I think that's a good pick. And if I was smart, I'd stick with it. But I love the way Joey Logano can pull up on people and push them. That means that car is really fast. I'm going to say Joey Logano wins. See who the guys upstairs like. Darrell? Man, I'm sure glad that uh, Michael let go of Carl Edwards. No, no, I, I think I got to go. I got to go with Martin Truex. Uh, that car has been super fast. I'd love to see Martin pull this thing off. He's going to start right behind the leader. Uh, I'm going for the 78. Well, Larry. you heard Chris Myers talk about Matt Kenseth won seven races in 2013. It's been a year since he's been to victory lane in a Sprint Cup Series race, and that was a Budweiser duel, and he has a fast race car. Yeah, I like last, Matt. Larry, the last time he was in victory circle was here in Daytona. It was uh, the Thursday race, but the last time he won a race was right here. Well, none of the top five have ever won this race, so I'm going to take the darkest of dark horses. Casey Mears comes from a great racing family. His dad, Roger, his uncle, Rick, his granddad, Bill. The Mears gang, well known throughout California and at Indianapolis. He has one Sprint Cup win. He's run hard, hasn't led this race yet. But remember, seven times the Sprint Unlimited has been won by a driver who led only the last lap. In most of those times, it wasn't very much of the last lap. That's right. Yeah, well, just think about it. These guys, I mean, this, this restart with the cars all bunched up the way they are, that's going to play into maybe some guys' hands that are back in the pack just a little bit. If these guys up front run side by side very long, that could play into Dale Earnhardt's fan, uh, hands. When and, they take the green flag, it'll be nine laps to go. And what about my man, Harv? I mean, his old piece has beat all the pieces, and he's running six. Thing's got a lot of patina, as we say about classic cars. No, I, I like what he said about it. it's got character. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't buying the narrow or run no, faster. No, no, no. I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's the field as the Toyota safety car brings them off turn number four. It'll be nine laps to go. Two Toyotas leading two Chevrolets. Logano, the lone Ford in the top dozen. As we get ready to restart, will this be the final restart? Let's see. Green flag. <laughs> Kenseth breaks out. Yeah, that, that worked out pretty darn good for the Gibbs boys. The 19 of Carl Edwards able to get down behind his teammate. Whoa. No, Carl didn't Now, get there's going. what you can do with a wrecked car. You just go right through the middle of them and say, hey, hit it again. I don't care. Truex made a big jump to the outside. Harvick filled the middle. Uh-oh. Yeah. 19 cars wobbling around a little bit. You don't reckon he's got a low tire, do you? Awful yeah, lot of he's, sparks. He's like line. sparking in the, on the straightaway. Edwards, Mears, Kyle Busch, third, fourth, and fifth. Behind Matt Kenseth and Martin Truex. Honestly believe there's some, uh, something up with that 19. Eight laps to go. He's fighting back now. I'm not sure what was going on. She sparked there for a lap or two. Whoa, oh, here Stewart goes Stewart around. around. Into, into Biffle. Tony Stewart goes around. And caution waves There's yet again. More cars. Kurt Busch and Greg Biffle, a hard hit there. And the answer to your question before that to restart? No. I guess we get the inside wall end. hard. Greg Biffle pounded the inside wall, but he wants to drive it home. Kurt Busch will not be so fortunate, I don't think. No, yep, that's far enough. And Tony Stewart, who yesterday had such optimism for the start of this season, the leg healthy, Stewart in a great frame of mind. 
doesn't make the checkered flag tonight. All right. Kurt Busch puts the window net down and unhooks his helmet. The window net down is a signal to safety officials that he is OK. Now we'll watch Kevin Harvick make a move up high and Casey Mears in the 13 move with him. And then it's on. Let's have a look here. Comes and Kyle Busch on the outside. Watch the 18. Oh, looks like the 18 and the 14 made some contact. Looked like smoke kind of drifted up in front of Kyle Busch, and they made a little contact, and that turned the 14 right down the hill. Jeff Gordon, another near miss. And Kurt Busch all torn up, not sure he could even see the 16. Yeah, and where he hit off that. the wall here. Pow. Where the 16, I guess the 16 or 4, I don't know which one hit at the end of the wall. I think the 16 did. Right where that wall curves out just a little bit is right where he hit it. Left side of your screen. Darrell, did it look like the way that the 14 Tony Stewart went across the front of the 18? He just got loose right there? It did, Larry. I, 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 I'm not sure they made contact, but the air off of the 16 is what sucked the 14 around, and that oh. is an incredibly hard hit. My gosh, I'm glad. Oh, and then here, here comes yeah. neither Kurt. Had, neither could control their car, no. and I don't think either one could see. And piled right in. But you know what? I'm so thankful that we got the safer barriers back here now because we didn't always have those there. I think the initial contact, Larry, was when the 14 started up a little bit, and they kind of touched it, and that just got the oh, 14 loose. Look at the speed of Biffle into that wall. Watch this thing. Pow. Kurt Busch, just a passenger sliding on into him. A narrow escape for Jeff Gordon. The middle's going to roll up here ahead. Down. 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 You got damage, boy? Yeah. That's just, that's incredible experience. Not to panic. He didn't drive, he didn't jump on the brakes. He drove through it and came out the other side. Jeff Gordon. Red flag is displayed. The cars that could make it back to pit road have done so. And we listened into Greg Biffle team audio. Yeah, that was bound to happen when they lost all their momentum over there and everybody had a lot more than everybody else, but good try there, guys. It's good effort there. You all right there, bud? Yeah, I'm good. Thank goodness, because that is one of the hardest Hits at speed we have seen here in a while. Watch Greg Biffle. Yeah, remember Danica Pat Patrick had a wreck very similar to this a uh, couple of years ago right back there. And then here comes Kurt Busch just running pretty fast. All that blue foam you see, there's impact foam inside each door of these race cars, energy absorbent foam. When you see this in real time, I mean, and the driver, he's sitting there and he sees that wall coming and there's nothing he can do. And right about the time that Greg hit that outside, that inside wall, he thought, well, I survived that. And bam, where'd that guy, where did Kurt come from? Great physical conditioning and well-researched, well-constructed safety equipment, both inside these race cars and against that retaining wall. Everybody's and, okay. And Mike, because this is a special race, you mentioned they brought the cars to pit road, red flag. Again, they're allowing them to work on their cars. All of these drivers, their cars got four fresh tires, filled them up with fuel. So uh, everybody's going to have good tires to, to make this last run. And a little bit of a shootout here, Larry. I mean, you know, just, uh, just enough laps left to make it really exciting. <laughs> Larry, is there anybody left that doesn't have some damage tonight? I'm not sure there is. Maybe maybe uh, <laughs> Matt Kenseth up at the front of the pack because that was a, definitely the safest place to be. But I, I think who who this caution probably really plays in favor is Dale Earnhardt Jr. because he was back there and he just he couldn't go anywhere. He has he's got a fast race car, so now he's going to be a little closer to the front. 
Kevin Harvick used to complain that Jimmy Johnson had a hidden horseshoe in his seat. Has Jeff Gordon picked up that horseshoe? He's had some narrow escapes tonight. I don't know if he, he borrowed it, that's for yes. sure. He's got it tonight because he's gone through a couple of these big wrecks without to really making any serious contact. Uh, Harvick sitting there in good shape now with that wrecked car. The two Gibbs cars, the 20 and the 19, that may be a, that may be strong contenders, plus the 78 still, uh, still hanging in there. Well, we will restart, and it's far from over, but let's get a race recap from Chris Myers. Mike, it's uh, been a crazy uh, wreck fest. 25 drivers that you'll see in the Daytona 500 here in the Unlimited as they were introduced this evening. Dale Earnhardt Jr. worked from the back, 24th to the front, led 13 laps. Before the caution that was planned at lap 25, we had a wreck. Yeah, Kyle Larson and Brad Keselowski get together in the trial, but Brad slides wildly into the outside wall and collects a few other cars as well, and that brought us to our caution. NASCAR, as Brad Keselowski had the lead, he was okay after going to the care center. And of course, the technology advanced for officiating on pit road, caught a couple of drivers in effect tonight. Greg Biffle here involved in this with Jamie McMurray and at least 12, possibly 14 drivers caught him. Yeah, McMurray got hit in the back by Biffle. McMurray said it's car. Biffle said McMurray got loose. McMurray said, yeah, it got loose when you had my wheels off the background, uh, off the ground in the back. <laughs> that causes a crash. A great move with 19 to go. Matt Kenseth in front of Martin Truex Jr., who has led much of this race. And look right there behind him is Joe Gibbs racing teammate Carl Edwards. Those cars are strong. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. looks like he lost the right rear tire, got down in the corner and spun around, collected Austin Dillon and a couple other cars. And then this big crash uh, will take us to our checkered flag, I hope. Moments ago, and you see between Kyle Busch and Tony Stewart and the, the Greg Biffle slamming right in through the, the wall and certainly hope that he's okay. And then after Biffle hit the wall, Kurt Busch hit him. But wow, what a job Jeff Gordon did driving through this thing. Watch Gordon with these reflexes. Slipped right through there. Just a little bump on the front. I wonder if there's much damage to it. His final unlimited and his final Daytona 500. He had some interesting comments prior to the race with us on the pregame show to Jeff Gordon. But let's check in with Matt Yoka. Now, Chris, Al Gustafson on top of the box surveying the damage. Josh Kirk, the car chief, you can see he's right at the left front tire. He's got duct tape. They're trying to seal up the hood seams now when he had that contact the bracket at the back left corner of the hood that's broken they've used duct tape and bare bond to try to get that back down to help the aerodynamics they've also worked on some of the uh, left front corner area as well so slight cosmetic damage for super g and firing the engines, a yellow displayed. We're going to be, what, three laps to go here. We'll get the, back on the track. By the time we get the green flag, probably three laps to go. And what a great story this would be if Jeff Gordon can win this in his final attempt. He's done an awesome job getting through trouble. He's obviously got a fast car. It'll be fun to watch Jeff work here late. Let's listen in your leader at the moment, uh, Carl Edwards and his team audio on the radio. Hey, Matt, just uh, crazy just said that Matt said we don't want to have that repeat of that. So he said let's just both roll if everybody is agreeing. And then after we get everything sh clear, maybe we can help each other towards the end. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's good. He sees it that way. That's, that's the way I see it. So that'd be great. In his new 19, a Joe Gibbs a Toyota after his years, 11 of them at Roush Fenway Ford, Carl Edwards. Let's head back upstairs. And this is, uh, Mike, a survival of not only the fastest, but one who could avoid the fittest, I guess, in terms of avoiding another wreck. Absolutely, Chris. To finish first, you must first finish. Six laps to go right now. Matt Kenseth, Carl Edwards, two Toyotas leading the Chevrolets of Truex, Harvick, Mears, and Larson. Then Kyle Busch's Toyota and Joey Logano's Ford. What do we have to finish this race last year? I think eight cars. And eight so, out of 18 last so, year. So we're getting down to it. <laughs> So they'll come around for four to go and hopefully get one to go to go back to green. February is American Heart Month and Fox Sports supports. Proud to recognize the American Heart Association's commitment to building healthier lives. Visit foxsportssupports.com for more information. Well, they 
too many men over the wall. Alan Gustafson being told his car goes to the tail end of the field. Now, the pro officiating system, when it recognizes uh, men over the wall too early, it sends a signal to that trailer and an official reviews the video. Too many men over the wall can also be called there or by the NASCAR official who used to be stationed in the pit lane and is now stationed on the back side of the pit wall along with the crew. Those calls are radioed to the tower and made official. The so thing Jeff about, Gordon will go to the back. The thing about it is now, Mike, you are constantly under surveillance. When your car's on pit road, it is being, it is being watched uh, by a camera. And so uh, maybe something that you've gotten away with in the past, not saying that they have, but I'm just saying things sometimes get by with these officials with late in a race like this. You're not going to get away with that kind of stuff now. Earlier today, two practice sessions for Daytona 500 qualifying with similar appearing but different cars than these. And tomorrow on Fox NASCAR coverage, you will see who wins the front row for the 57th running of the Great American Race. Daytona 500 front row qualifying 1 p.m. Eastern only on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't count out that we see some of the action tomorrow that we've seen here tonight uh, with the group qualifying and uh, getting, you know, gotten to get the draft and got to get in the right spot. That's right. First time in history, first time since this speedway was built in 1959 that we will have group qualifying for the Daytona 500 front row. Well, and there's 49 drivers, and there's a lot of desperate drivers that really need a fast speed to possibly fall back on after the dual races, or they'll end up going home. Pace car begins to distance the field. Matt Kenseth and new teammate Carl Edwards on the front row. I tell you what, if those two Gibbs Toyotas, the 20 and the 19, Kenseth and Edwards, if they get hooked up, they're going to be hard to beat. Green flag. Kevin Harvick in that four just pushing Matt Kenseth in that 20 in that outside line. I think he narrowed that four up a little bit more there a bit ago when he went three wide off the two over there. He hadn't given up. That's one thing I like about old Harv. He will not give up. Now Kenseth wants to come down in front of his teammate and not drag the four along with him. He's done that. Now he's distanced the field and gives them a chance to gang up on him in the backstretch. Yeah, being way out front like that is not always a hot tip because you're setting duck out there. They're going to come running at you down here getting into turn three. And Carl Edwards in that 19, he's stuck in the middle, and he's starting yep. to fall back now with no help from anyone. Yeah, but not, that's not working out good for Carl at all. Truex and Mirrors on the inside with Kyle Busch. Matt Kenseth off turn four by himself, coming to three laps to go. Strong car that 20 is. I mean, he's uh, taking a lead. We saw him make some power moves to get the lead. Can he hang on to it? That's the question. I know that 78 car, Martin Truex Jr., has been mighty strong. He's been a match for the 20 car. He may be the only one that can do anything with him. He's led the most laps tonight. Truex has 30 of them, but can he lead the last lap? He's going to have to have some help. He's got to get somebody up there to push him, uh, to push him by, Matt. That's what it's going to take. And right now, he doesn't have any help at all. Only thing he's got is to run up on the back of the 20 and hang on to him. Here comes Carl on the inside. Carl Edwards, the 19. Casey With Mears. From Mears. Mears down on the bottom, giving Carl a shove. Time running out. Two laps to go. Darrell, I think Kevin Harvick's number four car, it just, it just appears it's aerodynamically. It just won't get up there and get the job done. It's aerodynamically challenged. Yes. Let's just put it that way. And, and, we, and we felt like it would. I felt like he could follow, but for him to be able to make passes, it's going to be hard to do. Joey Logano in the Ford trying to come up and give Harvick Chevy a push. Can't quite get to him in the back straightaway. Well, boys, we come off turn three and four. Off turn four here, coming to the white Whoa, flag. Harvick oh, Harvick up and into the wall. Harv pushed up the hill right there. That's some of that aerodynamic problems he's got. Up the middle, Kyle Larson comes to fourth. I'm not sure part of his aerodynamic problems wasn't Joey Logano on that 22 car. Oh, you pushing. think he got a little help, do you? And he's got a big tire rub on that number four as Kenseth comes across for the white flag. Last lap. Probably going to last, uh, you know, two and a half miles, but it uh, took the momentum away. And look how far out front Kenseth is. Boy, that would make me nervous. Woo! 
I mean, you, you love being that far ahead, but, man, you're just sitting out there. These guys are going to get such a run on you. A one-year winless streak trying to come to an end for Wisconsin's Matt Kenseth. Edwards. Here they come. With Truex in the 78, they're going to be right there with Kenseth as they come off turn four. And there he comes, Martin. He's got to look. Truex looks to the inside. Nothing there. Can't comes to it. the high side. Can't he's going to run out of time and run out of room. Matt Kenseth wins the Sprint Unlimited. Wow, what a powerful run by that 20 car. That thing was strong, baby. Yeah, buddy. Nice work. Nice work. That was fun. Good job, guys. I tell you, Martin Trex, you got to be happy with that second place finish. I know I thought he had the car to win. I think he did. He just couldn't get anybody to go with him. Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth's teammate, I'm not sure how much he was willing to help Matt Kenseth or uh, to help Martin Truex in that situation. Kenseth's best previous finish in this race, third. It is the seventh time that Joe Gibbs Racing will go to victory lane in the Unlimited. You know what I like about his car? I think it's the only one out there that isn't all banged up. Martin Truex caught Kenseth, who came right down to cover. And you know how you could tell how much harder Martin was running that three, third and fourth turn, that last lap there coming in there? Because the thing was bottoming out. He carried it in there as hard as he could. That's a good sign of how good of a handling car Matt Kenseth had because we saw him do that several times, just turn that thing down to the bottom line. And Harvick and Logano taking their frustrations out in sheep metal as they come to pit road. Well, the last few races of the 2014 season had their share of dust ups. NASCAR officials quickly over to those two cars as Matt Kenseth celebrates on the front straightaway. It is the eighth time that Matt Kenseth goes to victory lane at Daytona International Speedway. And now there will be a discussion. You notice that Harvey hadn't taken his helmet off. No, but I like that the crew members, while standing guard, they're content to let the two drivers talk it out. That'll be the end of that for now. By the way, Logano was pulled away by one, a member of his team. Matt Kenseth will head for victory lane, and here is the cause of the upset between Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick. Yeah, when I said that, I thought Harvick's car might be aerodynamically challenged getting into turn three. I thought that's what put it up the racetrack, but I think you can see <laughs> a lot like what Jamie McMurray was talking about. My car don't turn so good, my rear wheels are off the ground. Matt Yoakum is with Logano. Well, he's watched the video. You also had a conversation. What was the discussion with Harvick? Uh, it's Kevin being Kevin, like he is the instigator, uh, like everywhere else we go. <laughs> New Year, same stuff. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's trying to help, really, to be honest with you. You know, we had a run. He's going to keep pushing, and um, apparently his car was tight. I was doing the same thing with the 78 all night, and it was working. Uh, but uh, just, we got in the corner, and he got tight, and... Um, he got into the fence and I was just trying to help and uh, he doesn't understand I was trying to help. I understand his, his frustration, but I was just trying to help out and try to get to the front and try to win this thing. It's no points or anything like that. You know, you go for the win. The second place, third place, fourth place doesn't mean anything. So uh, we're just trying everything we can do. All right. Thanks, Joey. Chris? Well, Kevin Harvick not happy with the 22 pushing you up into the wall there and it got pretty heated. What did you say to Joey? I just told him I didn't appreciate it. You know, there's... You, you know where you can push and how you can push and, and how far you can push, and you can't push them all the way into the corner up against the fence. So uh, just proud of my Jimmy John's guys. They fixed the car and did everything they needed to do. It was a hell of a race tonight, um, but, you know, just really dumb driving there at the end. So you, ha you got to be aggressive, but you still got to use your head. You can't just detach it and lay it on a floorboard. Yeah, heck of an effort by these guys. This car is beat up. Well, Kevin Harvick comes home 11th. Joey Logano crossed the finish line in 6th. 
And while we sort that out, Cambridge, Wisconsin's Matt Kenseth climbs from his Toyota, a winner at Daytona in the Sprint Unlimited. Jamie Little is there to greet him. And what a race it was for Matt Kenseth, led 21 laps. Matt, it was a long year for you guys last year, winless, and you just kick off the season with a win here. What does this mean for you and your team? That's a great feeling. It's always uh, fun to win at Daytona, for sure. It's fun to win anywhere. <laughs> it's been a year, so um, just really proud of this whole team at JGR. A lot of new additions this year with Carl and, and a lot of great personnel at the shop. Everybody's been working hard. All four of our cars were really fast yesterday. I had a feeling, uh, you know, it's going to be a good week. We've got a lot of racing left to do, but all our cars have speed, which is uh, which is the first thing we uh, look for. So I really want to thank Toyota and TRD for all the power, and, of course, our great sponsors, Dollar General, DeWalt's on the car this year, uh, Gatorade, Citizen, Wiley X, Reesers, and Cessna. We just got uh, great partners to make this all happen. Matt Kent at the two-time Daytona 500 winner. He's fired up. Look out for him next Sunday. Guys? Great drive. And driving away from the field was Matt Kenseth. After the race, fireworks between Harvick and Logano. 13 of 25 cars crashed out of the race. But in the end, Matt Kenseth drove away from the field to win the Sprint Unlimited. Special thanks for the fans tuning into the Sprint Unlimited. And don't forget, Sprint will cut your rate plan in half. Bring your Verizon or AT&T bill, turn in your old phone, 
And they'll cut the rate plan in half. Visit a Sprint retail store or go to Sprint.com slash half price. Let's head back track side. Jeff Gordon is with our Matt Yoka. Jeff Gordon finished seventh tonight. I don't know how many times you dodge bullets on the racetrack. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of them that I dodged. Many that you didn't see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I was kind of happy to survive some of those, but we had an awesome race car. I mean, I, I really thought we had a race car that could win the race. And we were in position when we got in behind Truex, you know, in second. I, I thought we were in great shape, but uh, yeah, I just, I got in the inside lane on like every restart and the inside lane just couldn't get going. So um, yeah, we never, we just kind of fell back and we're working our way back up there and kept getting damaged. But still all in all, fun race. Uh, this thing's wild and you know, that's what it's gonna be like at the end of the Daytona 500. So I'm, I'm other than being at night. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about the way our car performed and really excited about our car for next week. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Well, last year, Martin Truex led only one lap all season tonight led 30 laps but Martin it looked like you just needed a dance partner tonight you know the move the, the race was over when when Kansas got got by me for the lead I knew it was gonna be tough to pass him he's um, he's really really good here apparently he's just a little bit better blocker than I am but uh, can't say enough about everybody on the uh, furniture row 78 team uh, everybody at Chevrolet what a what a hot rod we had and uh, I'll tell you what um, after the last year and a half I've had I really needed that uh, these guys really need the really need the shot in the arm and uh, just really proud of their efforts over the winter time really excited about this year and uh, hopefully this is something we can come out and do each and every week. Led the most laps and uh, a story beneath the surface with Martin Truex Jr. His girlfriend Sherry Pollock's battling cancer last year going through treatments. Uh, Martin Truex thought about stepping away from racing. She said, no, it's what you do. You have to do it. Uh, she's doing quite well. Was here tonight with him. He said that she inspires me. So a happy Valentine's Day to them. And he had a, a terrific run. And our own Steve Burns, who's battling cancer, we think of him every day. He's watching and we hope you rally and come back and join us real soon. But Truex, not only an inspiration uh, with his girlfriend on the track as well, and a guy we can watch is maybe a long shot for the Daytona 500, the way he ran as we look uh, from qualifying and then the race uh, a week from tomorrow. Well, we, he talked about the way that uh, Matt Kenseth was able to block him, but when Martin Truex Jr. was out in front, he was all over the track taking care of business. You think about Matt Kenseth as a guy that can win the Daytona 500, Dale Jr., Jimmy Johnson, those are your favorites. Add Martin Truex Jr. and Casey Mears, top five finish tonight and then Unlimited, put those two guys as a couple of underdogs that might can pull off the big win next Sunday afternoon. Bernsey, I love you. Thanks so much for who you are, and uh, we appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, we're all thinking of you. Late local news coming up. Of course, the qualifying tomorrow on Fox at 1 o'clock Eastern. And uh, you'll be part of that, uh, Michael Waltrip. And also, we'll have some time in and around the qualifying. You heard Mike Joy talk about the interesting uh, format here. Uh, sit down with NASCAR chairman Brian France addressing Kurt Busch, Jeff Gordon, the chase, a number of other things that race fans are interested in. So for Matt Kenseth, his first ever Sprint Unlimited victory, a two-time Daytona 500 champ who will be in action tomorrow and will watch him closely a week from tomorrow in the running of the Great American Race. Thanks for being a part of NASCAR on Fox. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.